Let's talk about the beacon chain hiccup, the bad news for Ethereum, and let's get some ideas here. Once again, I we mentioned this briefly, I believe it was yesterday and probably even last week. We mentioned it during, of course, talking about the timeline for Ethereum moving to proof of stake and some of the hiccups going on. This is something that Bitsby Trippin considers to be a big deal and something that it appears to me that the developers uh, for Ethereum have basically blown off or not considered a big deal and it's a reorg. We're just gonna be covering this portion of it. Of course, they do talk about the merge moving forward in this same article. You can go read that, but we've caught everybody up, I think, on the merge timing already. We discussed it more yesterday in yesterday's show as well. Ethereum may finally be in the home stretch of its race towards the merge, but a security hiccup last week called a reorg briefly through the network's preparedness into question. The incident didn't wind up having any serious consequences for users, but it highlighted the complexities that came from running a network without centralized control. Blockchains work by organizing transactions into a series of individual blocks. The blocks are proposed to the network by a distributed community of workers, so-called miners, in the case of proof-of-work networks or validators in the case of proof-of-stake networks like the beacon chain. If enough workers come to the consensus that a given block is valid, meaning it contains only legitimate transactions, that block is added to the chain and the process repeats. Reorgs occur when some of the network's validators or miners hold a different view on which block was last added to the blockchain. It leads to a situation where the network branches into two parallel chains, each adding new blocks in parallel with the other. Ethereum's recent reorg took place on the beacon chain. Though users can stake Ether to become validators on the beacon chain, the chain won't process user transactions until it merges with Ethereum's mainnet. For this reason, the incident didn't have a significant impact on users. Key words here is that, remember yesterday we were talking about consensus layer, execution layer, the communication between the two via basically a special code, uh, an encryption key that will need to be done that will basically bring consensus between the two and and validate the transactions and thereby at that point will pay out the validators. Validators will have to now run basically two nodes once we move to proof of stake because mining will not be or no longer be a part of this. It's important to note here that it's not a big deal specifically because mining is still being utilized to process the transactions. So once the validators are running this entire system, then this does become a big deal because right now, like I said, the reason it doesn't is because the miners are validating the transactions. Reorgs can happen for a variety of reasons. In this case, some beacon chain validators were using updated software that enabled them to process blocks faster than some other validators. That led to some confusion between validators on which blocks had been added to the chain, causing a brief split in the network. Here is a tweet says the Ethereum beacon chain has experienced a seven block, oops, Anyways, a seven block deep reorg two and a half hours ago. This shows that the current uh, attestation strategy of nodes should be reconsidered to hopefully result in a more stable chain. Proposals do already exist is what he did mention. And you can read the full thread there. Eventually validators converged on one correct chain and abandoned the other. Discrepancy was quickly resolved, but not until seven blocks had already been added to the rogue beacon chain offshoot. Once validators came to an agreement on which chain to follow, it was business as usual. New, blo new blocks were issued onto the correct conochial chain, and any transaction that made their way onto the other chain were relegated to new blocks. So what's the big deal? No harm, no foul, right? Not so fast. Reorgs can be exploited by bad actors to engage in malicious activities like double spending. They can also lead to rejected transactions, which is a major user experience bummer. Blockchains actively try to avoid reorgs, and last week's beacon chain reorg was the longest Ethereum has experienced in years. 
Thankfully, last week's reorg doesn't appear to have meant much for Ethereum in the long run. Had all validators updated their client software as recommended, as will be required by the time of the merge, the reorg kerfuffle wouldn't have taken place at all. Except that if that doesn't happen for the main merge, then it would be a big kerfuffle. That's how I read it. And they're going to coordinate all of that. I'm all right. Nevertheless, the incident posed a stark reminder of what's at stake. <laughs> Pun intended, I hope. <laughs> Should Ethereum's merge go sideways? With so many participants expected to participate as validators on Ethereum's proof of stake chain, it also underscored the coordination challenges faced by Ethereum's core development team as it works to roll out an update to thousands of unique network operators. The following is an overview of the network activity on the Ethereum beacon chain over the past week. For more information about the metrics featured in this section, you can check out the 101 explainer on ETH 2.0. Uh, metrics. So the network health, network participation rate, 99% to 99.79%, 0.1%. There you go. Totally deposited number of validators, 396,887, 136 pending, which is actually down 6,202. I guess that's because they became active. I'm not sure. And share of the total ETH supply deposit is 10.68%. All right, so validated takes. Uniswap has processed more than $1 trillion in lifetime trading volume. Uniswap has the most volume among decentralized exchanges, while centralized exchange Binance sees nearly 15 billion US dollars in trading volume every 24 hours compared with Uniswap's 1 billion. Uniswap has seen a 500 billion increase in trading volume since the fourth quarter of 2021, and it is used by more than 83% of DeFi users. In a tweet, Uniswap Labs CEO Hayden Adams said he never expected Uniswap to grow the way that it has. Wall Street doesn't want the US Federal Reserve to launch its own digital dollar. They keep going on and on and on. This is all I really wanted to cover, which was essentially the reorg. So. Do you think that the reorg is a potential problem for proof of stake and the move over, or do you think that it's not? Once again, like I think that it's not a big deal now, but it's a big deal once you move over the miners to validators. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.